Hello, my name is Paul, and I'm going to present you our findings on the complexity of computing the house of distance between two semi-algebraic sets, and this is joint work with Linda Kleist and Till Mitzel. So first of all, what is the house of distance? The house of distance is a well-established similarity measure between two sets. It basically answers the question of how similar are two given sets. And we always denote these two sets by A and B, and they will be subsets of R to the N. And also we will be given a rational number t later for the decision problem. So first of all, the definition of the house of distance. It looks pretty complicated, but we will get an intuition for it. There's two variants, the directed one and the undirected one, and we will first look at the directed one, which we denote by this little arrow on top of it. So the directed house of distance from A to B is defined via this complicated looking formula, but all it says is what is the furthest point in A from B? So the supremum maximizes the choice over the point A and A to find the closest one B and B. And equally we can think of it as how much do we have to blow up the set B until it contains A. And by blow up I mean uniformly in all directions. And this is asymmetric, so we define the undirected host of distance to be the maximum between the two directed variants, the directed host of distance between A and B and the one between B and A. And now the decision, decision problem is, given this inter, uh, the rational number t, is the host of distance between a and b at most t? So let's look at one example. We have two sets a and b, and we see that a is a subset of b. So for every point a and a, there's a corresponding point in b just below it. So the directed host of distance between a and b is zero. On the other hand, there's points in b, like this black point, from which it is very far to reach the closest point in A, in this case the white point. So we see that the directed house of distance between B and A is strictly greater than zero. And so then there is, so the house of distance is also greater than zero. So what is our main result? Our main theorem states that deciding whether the house of distance between A and B is at most T is complete for the complexity class strict UER. And I think that this complexity class is not very well known yet, so let us look where it lies in the hierarchy of known and studied complexity classes. So at the bottom of this picture on the right, we have the complexity class P, which itself is part of NP and CoNP. And NP is part of ER, a complexity class that has received lots of attention over the last years. And ER is contained in this green complexity class strict UER, which itself is inside UER, which itself is inside P space. But first, a little disclaimer. Of course, uh, the complexity of this question heavily depends on how complex the given sets are, in this case A and B. And in our case, the sets are fairly complicated. So A and B are described via formulas consisting of polynomial equations and inequalities. So what does that mean? Look, let's look at an example. For example, we have this formula capital Phi that depends on three variables X and Y. And it is defined via x squared plus y squared is at most 1. And we see that this defines this blue unit circle. And we can add another condition. For example, y is at least 2x squared minus 1, which is this red parabola. And they are connected via a logical AND operation. So what we look at is the intersection. So in this case, the described set is all x, y in r squared, such that phi of x, y is true, which is this green region. Okay, now we know what the complexity class, which complexity class we are looking at, but we don't know anything about the complexity class yet. And this complexity class is defined by a canonical complete problem. And this problem is called the Universal Existential Theory of the Reals, or short UETR. And the Universal Existential Theory of the Reals consists of all true sentences of this form. For all x in R to the n, there is a y in R to the m, such that phi of x, y is true, where this phi is a quantifier-free quantifier formula of polynomials and equations and inequations, just like the ones we've seen on the slide before. So let's consider two examples. We can look at the first example. For all real numbers x, there is a real number y, such that x times y equals 1. This is false, because for x equals 0, there is no such y. For all other x, there is a y. But having one counterexample is enough to make the formula false. 
But as this is the only counter example, we can fix it. So the second example is basically a fix. For all real numbers x, there is a real number y, such that x times y equals 1, or x is 0. And this now is a true formula, so it belongs to UETR. This is enough to define the complexity classes. So UETR, remember, is to decide whether such a formula is true. And the complexity class UER is now all problems that reduce to UETR. And by reduce, I mean the standard polynomial time many one reductions. And strict UER is a subset of this class that contains all problems that reduce to UETR and have these additional restrictions on, on small phi. Namely, small phi may only contain strict inequalities, so strictly less, strictly greater, and not equal. It may not contain equal or greater than or equal. And it may also not contain any negations because we could cheat with those. Negating a strictly less sign makes it a greater than or equal, which is forbidden. So again, we proved that Hausdorff is here in this hierarchy, it's in strict UER, and it is also complete for this class. We show hardness via a reduction, and the reduction idea is pretty simple. It easily fits on this one slide. So for the reduction, we start with an instance of UER, UETR. We are given this formula for all x in R to the n, exists a y in R to the m, such that small phi of x, y is true. And this whole formula is called capital Phi. And our reduction now needs to define two sets, A and B, the ones that define the Hausdorff distance instance. And for A, we simply choose the set to contain all x in R to the n, such that there is a y, making small phi of x, y true. And B is R to the n, so the whole space. So what is the idea behind this reduction? If capital Phi is a true formula, then for all x, there is a y. Thus, set A contains all x in R to the n. Basically, A is R to the n. Thus, A and B are the same set, and the house of distance is zero. On the other hand, if capital Phi is true, then there is at least one x for which there is no y. Thus, A is a strict subset of R to the n, and A and B are different, and we hope that the house of distance is greater than zero. This is the idea of the reduction, and this is how we think about it and how you should think about it. However, if we are strict, it has two problems. Namely, it's not correct and it's not polynomial time. So let's look at this. The first problem is about correctness. Two sets A and B have house of distance zero if and only if they have the same closure. They don't need to be the same, they only need to have the same closure. So if we have a formula for which there is only a single x, for example, for which there is no y. Then a and b are not the same, but they have the same closure. And in this case, they have house of distance 0, even though we started with a null instance. So a single counter example is not enough to get positive house of distance. This is the first problem. The second problem is the definition of a, which contains an existential quantifier. But our definition for the formulas A and B requires them to be quantifier free. And we can't just use quantifier elimination because this would lead to an exponential blow up in the formula size and we could not write down the formula in polynomial time. So let's only look at one idea how to fix problem one, the single counter examples here. And for this, let's first look at a concrete example where this happens. So we have this formula for all real numbers x exists a real number y such that x times y is at least 1. This is again a formula which is true for almost all x, but it's false for x equals 0. Only for x equals 0 there is no y. For all other x, I can take any of the green values for y, above or below it. So for our sets a and b, a is all x for which there is a y, so this is all real numbers except the 0 and b is just all the real numbers. Thus, a and b are not the same, but they have house of distance 0 because they have the same closure. How could we fix this? The idea is to impose range restrictions on the y variable. If we don't allow arbitrary values for y, 
but just once between minus one and one, for example, then we don't find any y for any x between minus one and one, because the y would need to be at least smaller, either smaller than minus one or bigger than one. So in this case, we increased the set of counterexamples. We have blown up the counterexamples. In this case, a is still all x for which there is a y, but this is now the real numbers minus the interval from one to one, from minus one to one, while b is still the whole real numbers. And this is big enough now, the difference between the two sets, such they have a host of distance strictly greater than zero. Of course, we cannot throw in arbitrary range restrictions. We have to be really careful not to make a true formula false or a false formula true while doing this. And this only works for formulas containing only strict inequalities. We solve this for all dimensions in the full paper, and this is why we only show strict UER hardness, because we need these strict inequalities. Okay, let me finish with two open problems. First problem is, are these two different complexity classes that we considered, strict UER and UER, actually different or are they the same? Being different would imply NP not equal to p-space, which is believed, but we don't expect a proof anytime soon. And the second problem is, what is the simplest hard setting for the Hausdorff problem? If you are given two simple polygons, you can decide their Hausdorff distance or even compute it in polynomial time. We showed that this is not possible for semi-algebraic sets where the problem is strict UER complete. So where's this tipping point? What is the simplest hard setting? Thank you very much.